Hey, New Trust Economy, this is Monica Prophet. I'm here interviewing Sylvia Christman from sylviachristman.com. She's a wellness coach, life coach, and business coach. She works with a lot of incredible VCs and entrepreneurs to help them grow their businesses and scale it a way that kind of makes sense to them in a more holistic manner. So you've seen a lot of different kinds of businesses, whether they're in blockchain or not, and I'm so happy you're here to join us. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that you made the time and that you're having me as a guest. Oh my gosh, I love it. I mean, let's see, how did we actually first meet? I know we met before we were talking podcasts and then we just got going and realized, wait a minute, we both have a lot more overlap than we realized. I know. I, you know, honestly, I don't remember because there were so many times that we connected and yeah. we ended up in a lot of really interesting conversations and it was just kind of uphill from there, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah, basically. It's like the number of, of communities that overlap. It's like a Venn diagram that just continues yeah. to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like and I saw you everywhere and I was like, oh, Monica, hey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Sure. Well, um, so I know that you've worked with a lot of different businesses and you've been at this for, uh, I think, a handful of years now, right? You've been doing coaching in a different way, but this particular business you've been at for at least four or five years. Am I right? Yeah, so I've, I've been working with entrepreneurs in the tech industry for over 12 years now in oh, various wow. different facets. I used to be, you know, a strategist on the team and, and then I went out and went more into the, I needed to reclaim my own health and sanity um, you know, due to this very common known thing called burnout, <laughs> you know. Yeah, popular thing in our industry, um, and I needed to sort of reclaim the way I worked and my well-being and my sanity, and really just shift some of my priorities in order to build a more successful life on top of that. And out of that came really me strategically consulting with businesses, and from that. Uh, on a freelance basis, just in the initial stages. And from that, I went into the coaching space because I realized that the strategies we can put into place to build a business and, you know, build teams in, you know, especially innovative technology environments in fast paced, high growth companies are really dependent on the people implementing it. And so I decided, you know, I, I realized that my competitive edge was always having been coached and having coaches. And then I went into becoming a coach myself because I thought that was like such a perfect hybrid to work on leadership development, mm -hmm. team building skills, and then infuse the ideas of wellness because they do actually yield higher returns and decrease burnouts into my methodologies, which then, you know, have been wildly adopted. And so the way I run my business with coaching consulting kind of like joined as one thing, because the goal of the coaching is to build the business, right? To right. strategically build the business and, you know, double your revenues and, you know, in a fast paced, high growth environments. And so it's just kind of, it took, it took a while to marry it perfectly. And that's been about five years. Yeah. Wow. So that sounds like, I mean, it's, it literally sounds like you've, you've put two things that really fit well together, together that would just make perfect sense. But it's almost like in retrospect, perfect sense, because as yeah. you're creating and innovating, you're like, oh, here, I'm just going to take these two wildly disparate things. And then suddenly they fit really easily though, right? Well, it was, it was part of my own evolution and journey, right? Because because I was a leader in a fast paced, high growth alumnus. I was the person that, you know, had a lot of pressure on her shoulders to meet numbers, to bring in the right people, to find the right partnerships, you know, to meet deadlines. And I burned out because I didn't really understand uh, what happens long term when you sacrifice your sleep and your you know diet sleep and exercise right so when i talk to people about like productivity hacks it's like diet sleep and exercise because you actually make better decisions faster you're more effective and your cognitive function is so much better that you have a heightened stages of focus that will yield higher returns faster i just didn't know that when i was younger especially in my 20s I just yeah. thought like, just push, push, push. And, and then the error rates went up along with it, you know? And yeah. so now I'm just so much more effective. And so what I teach people is to like slow your role in order to get more done, to be more effective and um, be a top performer and work in environments of rapid scale 
that actually yield productive returns, not like I'm really busy returns. <laughs> right. yeah, I'm really busy returns are so annoying. It's like, what did yeah. I actually do today? I don't know, stress right. myself out, hurt my adrenal glands. That's about it. <laughs> yeah, right. Like worked until 2 a.m. Just totally shot my adrenals for the next two days. Yeah, exactly. So it's- speaking of shooting your adrenals, can you talk about the kind of the moment where you knew you hit that wall and you knew you were burned out, you're going to have to make a change, whether it's the moment when everything had to stop or the moment when you knew which direction to go next, how you're going to get into coaching, consulting, a different type of path. Yeah, there were, there were some, some interesting developments in my life. I think I had, dis- the, the, I had discovered a more spiritual path in about 2000 four but it didn't really didn't really form took any shapes <laughs> like <laughs> relevant into the work world at all it was like i'm spiritual no, it was, and i work uh, over there right <laughs> well it was it was a slow growth journey let's put it that way i didn't <laughs> i was like hmm, that's fascinating as an atheist you know like, <laughs> what's happening here like everything is more relevant more important meaningful purposeful and it just it was very slow like it wasn't like a fast adapter when it came to that fast adapter and everything else but not that Right. So it wasn't until about 2006 that all of a sudden my life, I, you know, I, I, started, I, I became a yoga practitioner, I became mm-hmm. a regular meditator, and but it was sort of like a sideshow. And then it started just in field, you know, my teacher, my first teacher always said, like, it'll ruin your life. And, and what he meant by that was it started infiltrating everything I did in a positive yes. way. Yes. It, <laughs> and I was like, that's oh. what I found too. I'm a, I'm a chronic meditator. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like all of a sudden this thing you did, like out of curiosity on the side, just infiltrates everything in a positive way. And everything starts shifting no matter how little you care. Yeah. And, exactly. and that was me, you know, I wasn't like, Oh, this is great. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't drinking the Kool-Aid at all, <laughs> but like it just had its effects. And so as I was experimenting with myself and became more and more curious, the more positive my the effects were, my life became, my life became, and at the same time, my health was rapidly declining. Right, oh. so like the stress. So there's that happening. So the mind was getting there, but the body hadn't followed yet. <laughs> no, because my other skills, such as like excessive amounts of uh, caffeine, four hours of sleep at night. You know, I mean, that, that has its toll on you. Yeah. Shitty diet, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. like loads of travel, sitting in airplanes, transplants and automobiles, you know, like this just has a toll on you. And so, yeah. And, you know, there was a lack of fulfillment, you know, and yeah. I think like as all of these things were just like hitting home, I found myself being at home at night, making a lot of money, having a career in New York City that probably most people would have wanted, but I found myself burned out, tired, and un- unmotivated un- by life. Yeah. W- watching like the ceiling fan go in circles at night going, wow, is this it? You know? <laughs> is this yeah. it? Because it's kind of meaningless. I just did all the things. I got to where I thought I was going and I'm here now and this isn't the party I thought. <laughs> yeah, like where is the party? Where's, joy? Where's the party? Where's passion? Where's yeah. love? You know, right? like, you know, I, got, I have money, you know, and success. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. You know, so... You know, and and then I needed to make some decisions on, you know, I think the doctors are pretty clear, you know, (laughs) and there's also something that happens with adrenal fatigue. You think you're depressed, but you're not. It's just your adrenals. Yeah. Yeah. It's not actual depression. No, no. It's just adrenal fatigue. Twice. Like, yeah, I was actually, I was, I had severe adrenal fatigue twice in my life. Once at 28 and once at 34. I could not get out of my bed. Like wow. could not get out. And it's just like this chronic fatigue in every inch of your body yeah. where you can barely make it through the day. And my doctors, uh, they, you know, they're just like, maybe we'll give you antidepressants. And they had, there's such a tragic effect on me. Started, yeah. No, I, I, I got a twitch, you know, they gave me, what wow. did they give me? Like Zola, Prozac, something like that. And I was just twitching. And I'm like, are, are we sure I'm depressed? Because this isn't really, you know, I'm like, <laughs> are we sure? <laughs> Is this where is Pfizer sure? <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm like, mm, I, I don't know about this. You know, it doesn't seem to, you know, other than yeah. acting crazy, like me, you know. So given that you have- weird, now I'm looking crazy. I'm not sure this fit, you know. I'm not sure. Is this really crazy? <laughs> Tell me, just for the sake of comparison, what yeah. would this look like? Yeah. So if you've, you've been in the wellness space for a while, you've got definitely a compelling wellness backstory. You know 
you know what works for you and what doesn't and what yeah. works for other people. Yeah. Have you worked with any wellness companies or people that are in the wellness space as well? Have you, do you have any um, or strategic partnerships that you feel like bring a lot to that, to that space for you? Um, I, well, let's see, I've worked for actual wellness companies. I've, I've helped them launch products because I, I think I'm a huge believer on homeopathics and herbal remedies over medicine. Because what saved my life was not the Prozac. It was, you know, a radical change, a radical change in diet, sleep, exercise, lifestyle choices, and with that, adaptogens and just sort of supplements and natural products that I'm eating. So not eating anything processed and utilizing anything from essentials to homeopathics. Yeah. And so there've been various companies I've actually worked with over the years that whose products I believe in. And, you know, I don't use anything chemical anymore at all. And that includes like makeup, shampoo, food, sunscreen, yep. you know, I know I've been doing so, the same thing when I finally, yeah. I just saw some video that I was looking for sp very specific herbal remedies for very specific things on YouTube. And this person just happened to um, have this long list that kind of scrolled as they talked about what you do in the morning, just how many chemicals the average person without really being a chemical fanatic, but how many chemicals you expose yourself to just by taking a shower, doing mm -hmm. your hair mm -hmm. before you've even ingested anything, how much you put on your skin and on your body. And it was like near 200, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just thought, oh my gosh, there's, I never thought of, I think about organic food, but I don't think about organic products nearly like the same way. So I thought, oh, as I just get rid of some of these, I think there's going to automatically be a health benefit. So, well, that's yeah, what, what's interesting is your skin absorbs the chemicals faster than your stomach absorbs non, non by, um, wow. non, yeah. That's amazing to know. That's incredible. I had no idea. Yeah. So just don't, you know, all the, I, 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 I mean, I grew up very hippie just to be very clear. I was speaking to my massage therapist yesterday and as a German who grew up in Waldorf schools, we've been using Veleda and Dr. Hauschka products since I was a baby. So I'm a Veleda baby. So I've, I've never had regular products on my skin yeah. until I came to America, which changed. And with that, my health declined pretty quickly. So that was wow. really interesting. That is so, really interesting. Yeah, yeah. So just like it's something I really highly recommend to people to look in because your mental well-being and ability to build neuroplasticity and be focused and highly productive greatly depends on what toxins you take in and that's not just through your gut and the food yeah. you eat but also to the chemicals that you use in the products mm -hmm. absolutely um and i i guess i ask about some of the the general genres that you've worked in because i know that we've overlapped even in just the fact that i'm in blockchain and fintech which seems like right. a huge leap but yeah. that's why I really love what you do because it's so translatable. It really, you know, you take the basics of, you know, diet, sleep, exercise, and it's not like these are, these are simple things. They're actually quite complicated. And as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it is to stay on top of my wellness and my own self-care because I'm busy birthing this thing out into the world, you know? So I love that your, your skill set is so diverse. It's not just that you're in the wellness space and you stick to the wellness space. You really, you talk with a lot of people in the venture capital world as well as in the entrepreneurial world and that entire ecosystem. And I know that we met through so many different communities, but we also have some overlap in the blockchain space, which mm -hmm. is interesting to me. Um, can you talk about any of the companies, even, even vaguely, if you can't talk, let's say their names, what you've worked on um, in terms of blockchain specific solutions or people that are working on that stuff? Yeah, so I, I would say this. I, I don't actually consider myself being in the wellness space because okay. I'm in leadership development, right? And I tell you why. Good. Because I'm, I, I might be a practitioner and I, I emphasize this component into leadership development, but that's because I have always worked in tech and innovation. Uh -huh. And so if you have a love for technology and innovation, it's almost impossible to not end up <laughs> at a front seat in, in <laughs> blockchain because if you're focusing on helping leaders and entrepreneurs and visionaries create something extraordinary, which is my interest and what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to give them the information and learning I've had for the last 12 years and including wellness because I don't want you to burn out as you're building something visionary. So right. that's why I ended up in that space finding 
you know, A, being fascinated with innovation as a tech pioneer myself, this is the only place I want to be when there's something new happening that's fascinating, that's challenging the status quo. I want to bring in thought leadership forms and into the leadership development and principles for the senior teams that as we're building them, that will assure that you will be more successful. Right. Because so you're in the leadership is, space, like clearly this is wellness. Yeah. Wellness is a component of leadership, but really the focus is the output of leadership. Yeah. yeah. Like I love right. building right. businesses and I want you to be successful. Right. Yeah. Like, so right. that's where my interests lie. And I think what's so important about, especially the blockchain space is we have a real opportunity to do things differently, right? Like we're reinventing industry sectors. We're using a new form of technologies we have globally. Uh, decentralized teams, right? That allows for flex schedules, that allows for women to have a whole completely different role in it because our need for flex schedules typically come along with children, um, you know, used to push us out of the marketplace. If there's a company that has a whole flex schedule and decentralized teams, that becomes irrelevant because everyone has a flex schedule. Right. Exactly. And then all of a sudden you have more opportunities. You have a and you have more equality, right? I mean, yeah, it just goes away. It doesn't become a moral and social issue of inclusion. It's just like right. everyone's doing it. It's more effective. Here's how it works. I know <laughs> how it works, right? Because I've been in the, you know, global innovation, and, yeah. innovation space for over 12 years, you know, on top of really bringing in, you know, real thought leadership and, and concepts that can help people thrive in those environments and help them shape this. And so that's why I wanted to be in blockchain and support founders in that environment to, you know, not burn out. Because if you're on a plane every day, three times a week, there are things you can do that will protect you from burnout, which we have seen. I mean, look, I've been in this space for a long time. So when you talk about what did I learn from working in the VC world and working in the more traditional space of investing in startups and technology and data is a couple of things that... 92% of startup founders are chronically depressed and burned out, you know, oh my gosh. Burnout is costing us over $400 billion a year, right? Like, wow, that stuff's real. So we already know this, we have the data for it, because, the, you know, unlike blockchain, the VC world, the traditional VC world has been around a little longer. So we had time to collect that data. Lifestyle choices haven't, you know, are no different. So right. the principles apply here Still too. Applies. So let's be smart and take what we learned and apply it as we're building this. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, to speak to the future of work and decentralized teams, decentralized work, I mean, I just want to underscore here that you're on this, ca this call with me from yeah. Tulum, Mexico, right? And I'm right. in New York City, yeah. right? So, <laughs> and you were on the beach earlier. Did I get that right? I mean, yes. this is part of your life, right? You've, you've architected a pretty smart solution. Yeah. And it, it comes with, and it's something, it, it's not for everyone, but it works for me, right? I work with teams in Asia. I work with teams in Europe. I work with teams in the U.S., um, so I try to keep myself in time zones that are favorable close to airports where I can go in and out of towns, so, you know, it's right. like I'm, I'm going to fly to New York, then I'm going to fly to uh, Europe, and this is a good airport, Cancun's a good airport, the time zone, East Coast time zone is always good, it's the same line as, it's, it's, it's a few hours to Europe, it's great for, it's still okay, it's like 12 hours with Asia, so it's yep. manageable, which, you know, West Coast becomes too hard kind for me. Kind of tough, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's tough, you know, like Australia also really tough for me. So it's, it's um, and from a quality of life perspective, I like to be in a place, you know, not that's not New York in the winter uh, while maintaining my efficiencies and being able to work. So this morning I got up at six because I started my calls at 7.30 with Europe, you know, right. and I had to do another call with Asia before even anything else because it's seven for them. So, and it works. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, I mean, some people think I'm on permanent vacation, you know, like, <laughs> sure. You know, if you want to believe that. But like if you want to call that, sure. It's actually just permanent life and work yeah. and life yeah. And, together. <laughs> yeah. And last week I had a couple of calls with Asia where I, I worked from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. in the morning, that's not a problem for me because I can sleep in a little bit and I just went to the beach in the morning and ate to take a little beach walk because that like recalibrates yeah. my adrenals and gives me the opportunity to not suffer burnout from having odd working hours. Yeah, you know? exactly. So, to me, that's just smart business. <laughs> so in terms of smart business, um, who, what have you like, um, gotten to peek in on as a leadership coach and sort of like almost an outsourced CEO for so many companies? In the blockchain space, do you have any specific um, experience with 
with some of the innovations that are coming out in this very, very new spot, I mean, it sounds like not only distributed teams are, of course, a big part of this, distributed ledgers, distributed teams, distributed health, and distributed coaching, but yeah. um, do you have any experience with your blockchain uh, innovators that you've been talking with? Yeah, so not naming names. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Person A. Person A. <laughs> Fictional character. Um, <laughs> um, so what I see across the board are common pain points. And, and, they, and they are, um, you know, signs of fatigue from a lot of travel and very fast-paced environments and yeah. just being, you know, in a different time zone, in a different climate, with a different diet, with food. Um, just I mean, that's the case for me. Absolutely. I've seen so many, especially people going through ICO or STO, they're mm -hmm. going to Asia to do a lot of their um, uh, fundraising. And to do that, it's just like you have to really, you have to go over for a couple of months at a time because it's just too much to go back and forth and back and forth. And I see so many people getting really burned out as they try to stay on this like treadmill schedule of like being at all of the right events all of the time. I I've myself have done it and it's really challenging to stay ahead of the fatigue. Right. And it's, I think there is, there's a bit of smart planning and that comes into place and prioritization and that you um, eliminate things that fall, you know, take on the hell yeses in yeah. one time zone, yeah. climate and environment and bounce around within that construct and then move into a different one and bounce around within that. Yeah, it does. It might seem like you're missing out, but you're going to be more present. There's also products and supplies to take with you to assure consistency in diet, sleep, and exercise. There's habits you can develop. You know, um, meditation practices while on airplanes will actually help you recalibrate and go into deeper states of med yeah. stages of meditation, so that you're getting into those delta waves. Uh, when you're missing out, sleep is more effective than trying to sleep or taking sleeping pills. Uh -huh, interesting. So that's something that's really important to understand. And like any entrepreneur, it's being super clear that you actually have regular team meetings to consistent. The, the faster you grow, the more often you have to have meetings for clarity to say, stays on the execution roadmaps. Out, right. you know, right. in, out, in, out, in, out, um, so that you don't become a chaos agent and a micromanager and end up confusing the whole team that nobody really knows what's going on anymore because you're just on the plane raising, <laughs> you know, raising funds and doing this. So to just take that one hour a week to have a team call and commit to prioritization and, kick, and, and just really be clear for that week only. And this yeah. is for rapid iteration. You know, this is this, and it's so important, especially in the blockchain industry. I mean, it's slowing down now because things are changing, but um, it's very important to just have everybody, like, just, just, it's an hour a day, it's an hour a week to just say, right. okay, where are we today? What's still relevant? What moved us forward? What's not moving us forward? Where are we going to pivot? Where are we going to redirect? What did we learn last week? Because you're in a new industry sector, you're yeah, doing things that are completely changing. innovative. You have to just like sit there every week and be like, what moved us forward? What's not actually working? What was the hypothesis that's not working? What are we, where are we pivoting? Where are we going? Yep. You know, and how awesome. are you actually? So what you see is visionaries want teams to delegate to, right? So they, they want executive decision makers, but they want them to just delegate to and forget to inspire and they right. forget to include and they forget to engage. And they're just so in their visionary space that, you know, they, they may be a good founder and visionary, but not necessarily a good CEO. And most of the time, it's very unlikely that they would fulfill any COO function. Right, <laughs> right. CEO is right. very different than CEO, especially. In, as yeah, really and founder can be very visionary. Founder can be very different from CEO too. Yeah, so exactly. Make sure you're delegating to the people that can fulfill these functions so that you have the right connections to the team. So you're not becoming micromanaging. Um, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. I, I find my... this that is just a chaos agent where there's a disconnect between vision and execution. Yeah. You know, which unfortunately is very common and make sure you get the right people in the right places to take these things over. And then everybody is, is who they need to be. And remember that when you have a, a team member wants to work for visionary, it is your job to inspire.
Right. You can't just like delegate. You know, yeah, there's, there's exactly. always this inherent disconnect between visionary founder wanting to delegate, team members wanting to work for visionary founders to feel inspired and engaged, <laughs> and that not aligning, you know, <laughs> you're just like, all right, yeah. we need to like learn this so we can have that, you know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's funny, I, I often say to people that I've wor- that worked for me, you know, if I wanted children, I'd have had them. If you don't know how to, you know, handle this, if I can't hand it off to you and not micromanage you, then Mm -hmm. this isn't a good fit because I don't, you need to know better for yourself. (laughs) You need to manage yourself at some point. I want to hand it and I don't want to be doing your job for you or checking in all of the time. And Mm -hmm. it's not everybody's style, but finding that right synergy with a team that it's the right style for you is really important, especially when you're working on new technology. It's going to change all the time. I mean, even with our business, we've just seen you know, we we're starting on one micro specific idea of what to do with our technology. And then so many iterations happen. It's so much innovation happened on the tech side that we realized, you know, we have a lot of marketing in, uh, innovation that we had to focus on as well. And you know, that where's the, where's the new frontier when you look at a new space like blockchain, it's very challenging. It's super challenging. And it's, it's really important to remember that, you know, if you're not the delegating type, you know, and you're more the visionary, hire somebody who's doing the project management and the delegation and the team inspiration. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Well worth the hire. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. It was really nice to hear your insights about how to keep people inspired, how to stay on track, how to deal with the future of work. And I can't wait to share this with our whole audience. It's going to be wonderful. So thanks again, Sylvia, for joining us. And I will make sure to include all of your links below this podcast. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for having me.